Okay, so we're gonna sew the lining now. Um, the lining, you should pretty much know how to sew. There's no big mysteries to it. But the main thing we wanna pay attention to is the back if you have a vent, okay? So on one of the back panels, it doesn't matter which one, the right or left side, I'm gonna mark the true center back, okay? Remember we added that one inch action pleat, all right, to it. So this right here is um, I'm using pins I'm putting through my pattern and my fabric layer to mark the true center back. And you can see the pleat, how it expands one inch and then away, starting at the top, and then it blends in towards the waist. I'm going to flip it over and I can see where my pins are. That's my real center back. Okay, so what we can do now is we want to mark where each of these pins are. Okay, we'll use some uh, chalk. I'm just going to mark each pin right underneath the pin as best I can. Okay, once you've done that, go ahead and take off the pattern. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste in, I'm going to do a running basting stitch, and I'm going to baste in my true center back. Okay. There we go. Now for a quick overview to see how the pleat works. Remember if you have a pleat, one side of your back lining pattern is notched out and the other is not. So the notched outside will go, will sew against the side that hat of the jacket that has the vent folded back. All right, and then the other side of the lining sews to the side that doesn't have the vent folded back, like so. All right, so a lot of times before I sew these, I like to lay them out to make sure I sew the correct side, because you have a left and right side, and I'm pinning. I'm putting pins in um, to my lining now. And you notice I'm just the side with the pin head, the lining side that where you can see the pin head, that's the right side of the lining fabric. All right. Now, for when you're sewing your lining, make sure you stay stitch your necklines and your armholes, okay? And do that to all your lining, okay? Stay stitch Stay stitch necklines and armholes. Um, same thing with your sleeve lining. You will stay stitch the um, armhole of it, or like the cap and then the, the well of it, rather. And, uh, okay, so now we're going to stitch our vent opening, okay? So we're going to start at center back. We don't need to stitch the whole center back. I'm just starting a couple inches below where the vent L's out, okay? I'm stay stitching at a half inch because what we're going to do is we're going to have a corner there that's going to be clipped eventually. So stay stitch, get down, and then put your needle down, bring your foot up, and then continue stay stitching out. And then I'm just going to stitch all the way down it. All right. The reason I'm stitching all the way down is eventually I'll press this edge under. Okay. And I need to be precise and press it under at a half inch because that's what my seam allowance is. So I'm stay stitching at a half inch so I know exactly where to press under. Now the way I am doing these, um, I am preparing this vent opening. Um, so here on the, the vent opening that's been notched out, I'll also stay stitch at a half inch. We'll also have a corner there we need to clip out. So we're going to stay stitch that and then stitch down like we did on the other one. Um, what I was saying is the way we're preparing these vent openings, we're going to do the same thing on the jacket sleeve if you have a vent there. Okay, so the same way I'm sewing this um, for the jacket center back vent, we will do the same thing for the vent on the sleeve. Okay. So there's no difference at all. It's just a smaller vent and it's in the sleeve. 
I'm telling you this because um, there's not going to be a video of how to do the vent sleeve on the jacket. Uh, or how to do the vent on the jacket sleeve lining because you do it the exact same way I'm doing it here. Okay, and then I'm just stay stitching a little bit at center back here just to mark exactly where my half inch is. So see where those two cross points are? It's basically where my seam allowances intersect. I'm lining those up. And right where those intersect, that's where I'll stop stitching. So I will not stitch past that into the seam allowance. And now I'm going to sew my center back together at a half inch. And this is actually part of the pleat now, the action pleat. And stitching that a half inch all the way down. Remember to stop right at that point where the the vent that goes out L's out and the vent that notches in connect. Do not stitch past it. <clears throat> and then back back. And then go ahead and stitch with a large basting stitch the true center back. That's why we basted it so we can see it. Okay, this will come out eventually, um, but we're just stitching this so we can press the pleat to one side accurately. And then stop. Okay, so now that this has been stitched, we're going to press it open, or to one side rather. Again, that's why we did a larger basting stitch um, to mark center back, and then we use that large uh, stitch on the machine as well to stitch it together there where we basted so that we can press it accurately, okay? And then later we'll pull that stitch out. All right, and just press that pleat to one side, no matter which, okay? So again, it's very important to remember to stay stitch your armholes and your neckline, and then the at the vent, you know, the side that L's out, the side notches in, do all, all the stay stitching there in those places, and, um, on the sleeve vent, you'll treat it just like the jacket vent, okay? And make sure on your sleeve that you stay stitch your sleeve cap in the well of it, all right? And then once you've done this, stitch the rest of your line together, shoulder seams and everything, and you're ready to go.